All right, this was sent into the channel for a review. It is an MESR-100. It's an ESR meter. In fact, ESR is right in its name. And uh, we'll talk about what ESR means uh, because this thing measures it. <laughs> so it's for testing capacitors. Um, I actually haven't ever owned one of these before. Um, but uh, yeah, let's talk about what ESR first, what it, what it is first, and then we'll talk about how the meter works. All right, so if we have a capacitor, it might have a resistor that looks something like a resistor because there's leakage, okay? So the capacitor can be leaky, and that can act like a, like a, a resistance, right? Um, so the capacitor should block DC, but sometimes it, 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 it leaks a little bit, and that can be caused or can be modeled as a, a resistor in parallel with the, uh, with the capacitor. Now, it might also have a uh, resistance in series with the capacitor due to other things. Um, and um, so this would be the leakage uh, resistance. This would be the series resistance. And if we add these two together, it equals the effective series resistance, effective series resistance. It's, it's a combination of everything. It's a catch-all. So ESR just kind of catches all the resist, resistive natures of a capacitor that it's not supposed to be there. Now, good capacitors, a perfect capacitor would have none of these. It would have uh, infinite resistance here and zero ohms here. So you would have uh, no resistance at all. All right. So uh, the worse the capacitor, the more resistance it has. So what this thing does is it tests the resistance. And if it's a very low value, your capacitor is good. If it's a very high value, your capacitor is bad. And there's a little table down here, too small to do on camera right now. But there's a table here that tells you for a given capacitor, what is the acceptable resistance? All capacitors will have some resistance. And this is the acceptable amount, OK? Um, can't make a perfect capacitor. All right. All right, so how can you test capacitors? Um, well, a capacitor could be uh, tested with some type of circuit like this, uh, a resistor and a capacitor, and you could put in maybe a square wave here, and you could watch it ramp up and ramp down and ramp up and ramp down. And you could do these time constants, the RCs and all that kind of stuff, and you could determine how big of a capacitor this is. And your DVM, if it has a, uh, a, a capacitor uh, setting on your DVM, that's what it's doing inside. It's just ramping up and ramping down and ramping up and ramping down. So it can test capacitance, but it can't test resistance. Okay? It can't test this thing called ESR. Now, if you have a fancy LCR meter, um, it can measure ESR. In fact, it's right here on this button. Now, the way that this uh, meter reads is it inputs a sine wave, okay? And it goes through the capacitor, and the capacitor will cause a phase shift. So it will look at this phase shifted uh, circuit, and it will determine what is the phase, how many degrees of phase is there due to the capacitor. And then it will do a bunch of mathematics and it will determine what this phase is. And using all of that mathematics and the frequency of operation and stuff like that, uh, you can calculate things like ESR or the dispersion or the theta or the Q factor. Those are all mathematical representations of the, uh, the complex conjugate of, uh, of these uh, devices, this, this phase angle stuff. I did, a, I did a video on LCR meters. You can look that up um, on how that mathematics works. Um, so um, there's another way, though, to measure ESR, which, which what, what this one does. OK, so let's talk about that. So, um, so how does this instrument measure ESR? I'm not quite sure. I don't have a schematic for this one. There's basically two ways to um, test ESR in these simple devices. Um, there's a standard of 100 kilohertz, OK? And so if you take a look at data sheets of capacitors and you look for ESR values, they'll say, oh, here's the ESR at 100 kilohertz, OK? Uh, so at a at 100 kilohertz um, the uh, voltage this AC voltage should go right through the capacitor and if you sort of look at the the signal on either side of the capacitor 
if, if, it, if it just goes flying through here, you'll see the same thing on both sides, okay? And if there's, a, if there's a resistor here, you can build up a differential between the two sides, and you can measure that differential. Um, so that's one way of doing it. I think that's the way most people do it. There's also a bridge circuit where you can put the, uh, you can put the capacitor in a bridge and measure the resistance that way. Um, but I believe this one probably operates on this, uh, on this series resistance type of, type of uh, circuit here. They're quite simple circuits. All right, so uh, let's turn it on. The old timey ones used to have an analog meter and the new ones have a, a, a display. You get the two uh, probes for the capacitor. If you want to be, be accurate, you, you uh, short, the two, uh, short the two wires together and you see they're measuring a quarter of an ohm because of the wire. So you hit the zero button and that takes out the wire. So now it's measuring zero, okay? And if we put in a uh, a capacitor to test. Uh, make sure your ground is in the right location and your plus is in the lo lo right location. This one is measuring 0.35 ohms. All right. And it says uh, that's good if your capacitor is less than 200 microfarads. And this one is 2000 microfarads. So this would be a failed capacitor. This capacitor would be, would be no good. Let's measure this one here. This should be a good one. Uh, this is a thousand microfarads. Uh, let's go ahead and hook him up, see what he measures. And you can see he's 0 0.06, so v not much resistance at all, right? And this says good for all caps. So um, this is a thousand microfarad cap, but it says basically if your cap's measuring 0.05, it doesn't matter what it is, it's a good cap, okay? You don't even need to read the little. Uh, the little chart down here, it tells you right on the on the screen there, okay? So I say, uh, we've showed that it can test this bad capacitor and this good capacitor, but these things are sold as in-circuit testers, okay? And what does that mean? Well, that means that you don't have to desolder the capacitor in order to test it. And so here's a board with a whole bunch of capacitors, and you need to unsolder all of those to test them, then put them all back in again. But this tester can test them in circuit. Okay, so how does it do that? All right, so we're going to test a capacitor in circuit. And what can, what can mess you up when it's in a circuit? Well, you can have things like uh, uh, transistors or diodes, which are just this is two. This is two diodes. This is one diode, right? You could have a uh, an op amp, which just has lots of these things in it. But there's always problems that if you're greater than 0.6 volts or greater than half a volt, then these diodes in your circuit will start to affect your measurement. If you're below a diode drop, then um, it will still be okay. All right. So let me demonstrate that. Um, let's see here. Let's use the bad one here. Uh, this is the positive. This is the negative. All right. I don't know if I'm all on camera here or not. I am not all on camera. There we go. All right. So it's measuring point th uh, three, eight, eight. So here is a diode. What if I put a diode uh, in parallel with the in parallel with the uh, capacitor, you can see that it doesn't change the value over here. Okay, make sure I don't use the resistance of my fingers here. But you can see that it didn't change the value at all. Okay, even though I had a diode across the, and I can put it in either way. It, it's not gonna, it won't affect it. In fact, you can put in two two diodes back to back. It won't affect the reading. Why is that? Well, these. These meters are made to use a test voltage. Okay, remember it has that 100 kilohertz test voltage, and it's about 0.25 volts, so much less than a diode drop. So you can use this meter in circuit, okay? Um, a lot of meters you can, though. This one, this one is also low voltage, so I could use this one in circuit as well. Um, so you need to test out whatever device you have 
You can test it though. You can you can do this simple diode check to see if your ESR meter is is running is working correctly by by doing that diode trick. Okay. All right. So this one can do in circuit testing. So let's give it a try. Let's test some uh, test some capacitors on this power supply here. All right. We got a big fat one here. Let's test that big fat one. I've already marked where the plus and the minus is, so I can get to it from the back side. All right, so let's test this here. This one is, make sure I'm making good contact here. 0.23, um, 0.24. Let's see, are we still zeroed here? Let me make sure we're still zeroed. Yeah, it's pretty good zero, but I'll do another, I'll do another zero. Okay, we'll come back to here. Yeah, 0.25. Um, we can go to our chart. This is a 400 volt, 150 microfarad. So 150, 400 volts, gonna leak a little bit more. It's saying anything less than 0.8 volts is working fine. So this is fine here. The uh, display is for 25 volt capacitors. So if you have a high voltage capacitors, you need to use the chart and that will tell you some more information okay these are all pretty much low voltage capacitors on this side so let's try one of those out here's here's one here let's take a look at him 0.4 okay so 0.4 is a little high let's take a look at what he is he's here all right and he is a thousand microfarad so Point four. Yeah, that's probably not a very good cap there. All right, and let's measure. Let's measure this one up here. Measure him. Oh no, two point seven ohms. Okay, can you see that on camera? Two point seven ohms. That is this capacitor right here, and that is a sixteen volt thousand microfarad. That's just awful. Okay, so let's desolder him and see if it. See if it tests the same out of circuit. All right, so I've removed this capacitor and looking underneath it, it looks like there's a little bit of wetness on it. And on the PC board, there's a little bit of leakage on the PC board also. So this capacitor has been leaking. All right. And so let's use our, turn my meter back on. Let me do a zero here. Uh, oh, he's already, he remembered. He, he remembered his zero, that's kind of nice. All right, so let's put this on this side and this on this side. There we go. And we're measuring 104 ohms. <laughs> wow, that's really, really bad. So it did measure different out of circuit than in circuit. It was other things in there, but it's because this one is so bad, <laughs> so bad. Uh, the rest of the circuit was kind of leaking in as well. And you can have things in parallel and stuff too. So the in circuit testing is not, a panacea. It's not going to always work, but in this particular case, it did work, right? So, so why is ESR bad and why do the, why do capacitors go bad? So let's talk about that. All right. So a capacitor is some, some plates and electrolytics. There's some goo. Okay. And so there's some goo in here. There's some chemistry. It's like a battery. There's some actual chemicals in here and stuff. And when it's new, uh, those chemicals are nice and fresh, but over time those chemicals can degrade and they can kind of evaporate They can kind of disappear or they can let loose and goo, goo your PC board. Okay, and um, It's because we're putting electricity in here and the, it's going to cause the electrons to move around and break bonds and stuff and the chemi chem chemicals and do all kinds of other stuff if you have a uh, basically a resistor in there that resistor acts like a heating element and can make these things start to degrade faster. So when it starts out new, it has very good conductivity and very low resistance. But if this, this one had a hundred ohms, that's a heating element. And you put voltage across a hundred ohms, it's going to get hot. And that hot makes the chemicals die even faster. Okay. So that's why you want to do the ESR test. It can predict if your capacitor is going to go bad in the future, because if you can catch these early and replace them, then great. 
So, you know, it's supposed to, this, this capacitor is supposed to be around 0.05 ohms. If it got up to one ohm, I would say, oh, you got to replace it. That's a bad capacitor. Um, and uh, we saw that this one was way, way over the hill, way, way past it to do. Okay. All right. Well, there you go. A review of the MESR-100. Uh, link down below to the uh, vendor who sent this to me. And uh, yeah, uh, I think it could be a handy, a handy instrument. It's very easy to use. Thank you.